we are privileged this afternoon to have with us Sir David Trini, who will be sharing with us on the future of valuation. What do you see concerning the, um, the, right, the direction of the valuation profession for the next five years? Well, I, I think looking at um, what I did with IFRS and the, the accounting profession, there's a lot missing in valuation. Uh, the first thing, is it a profession? Or is it just a whole lot of techniques and people use them? Right. So one of the, uh, the main things uh, is going to be, and hopefully be done within the five years, is to say, well, how do we compare this profession to the accounting profession? And that means that if you're going to be like the accountants, you're going to have to be as rigorous as accountants. So there's got to be entry requirements, uh, exams, uh, experience, ethics, discipline, CPD and things like that. So all that has to be put in place. Uh, what we want to try and do is to find out who are the professional valuers and who are the cowboys and we have to separate the two. Uh, so that'll be the first thing. The second thing is you mentioned global and um, at the moment uh, I would say that uh, valuation is in the same position as uh, we were when we started IASB. There's a lot of national standards right there isn't uh, an international acceptance yet. It's coming. So I think in the next five years, the idea is A, to create the profession, to have several institutes that are really solid members. B, is to have global standards that are identical. It's word for word, not just sort of close. Well, I, I think there's two things. One is um, when you come to accountants, uh, Malaysia, runs its own accountants, it yeah. regulates them. Who does the valuers? Uh, now, is that a case that you're going to have? Well, um, the profession here, the MIA, could also do the valuers. Um, now, would that mean real estate as well as business valuation, which uh, I suspect is very much more in the accountants field? Financial instruments is going to be a huge issue. Yes. Now, are you going to take that on? Are you going to suck bankers in uh, so they do it? Because one of the, the key problems they've got is um, we as accountants discipline our members. If, if they don't do it properly, we throw them out. Yeah. Who's going to do it for valuers? Okay. Well, I, I think what you're doing it sounds very sensible because you look around the world, um, North America is quite strong in business valuation. Um, Canada has its own special institute. Uh, America's part of one institute of valuers also does business valuation. Um, Singapore, and now yourselves, but there's not much, there's almost nothing in the UK. Right. Uh, you know, you're ahead of the curve in, in that respect. So, you know, I think the way you're planning it, uh, being done through MIA is exactly the right way because you don't have to create a new institute and set it all up if it's done through there. And you can still bring in people afterwards because, all right, they won't be chartered accountants, uh, but what they will be is whatever designation you give to your business valuers, provided they go through the exams and do whatever you like. But I, I think the valuation world would really like the accountants to step in and do exactly what you intend to do. And that's what they're doing in uh, in Singapore basically. But uh, Canada, it's separate. But a lot of them were accountants to start with. But then they've got an institute that mirrors what the accountants do. Well, well two things really. One is we, um, we want one set of international valuation standards, the same way as we have right. IFRS. That's the first. The second is we want to make sure that um, these other people, are they as good as you, or at least of a level that uh, people could accept them, there'd be trust and, uh, in, in what they do. So one of the things that's sort of going on just now is to say, well, here's what you must have to clear this hurdle. Now perhaps uh, we should enable you to give an international designation, not IVSC wouldn't give it, it would be you, okay. uh, would give it to your members to say, right, uh, you've got your uh, accounting qualification but now you've done all this stuff uh, and we recognize you as a qualified business valuer internationally whatever it's going to be the designation anybody who comes up from the outside either has to join MIA and do it through you if they want the designation or they've got to set up an organization that actually meets the deadlines and uh, the hurdles and we will actually test that so it'll be the uh, the level playing field be caused by the fact of um, one designation and you've got to jump over that before people realize you're not a cowboy you're qualified so that should get rid of the unlevel playing field you may be better than them but they're at least competent they're not okay. uh, somebody outside
So perhaps we take the lead to, to go. You are taking the lead, yes. And then, you know, there are the, <coughs> the, the other professionals who are in this field in Malaysia and could also, you know, take the next step. Of course, something at the back of our mind is, you know, with this regulated support that will make it easier to transition yeah. into international standards. Well, the, uh, I'm sure you can have a word with uh, Ranjit Singh along at the Securities Commission, but we're already talking to IOSCO about how we do more on uh, valuation because another area, as I mentioned earlier, is financial instruments. And yeah. how, nobody's doing that. Yeah. Yeah, there is uh, no uh, valuation body out there. Yeah. So that the consistency, might, the consistency, and it, you know, that might be something you also set up. So you not only do business valuation, but you also have a group of people who have a designation for financial instrument valuation. And when you think how important it is, um, it's not just financial reporting, but financial stability, because what worries me about financial instruments, the, the variation is huge among financial institutions for the same instruments. Well, that means A, the income statement suspect, B, the balance sheet is suspect, and C, given that the uh, financial buffers for stability are based on the balance sheet, that means they're suspect as well. And that's a huge lacuna in the whole regulatory system. So I think that people are going to be looking to say, well, who's going to set up the um, institutes uh, for financial instrument valuing, or is it going to be MIA? Are you going to have a separate group? They might not be chartered accountants, but you're going to supervise them, and you'll throw them out the same way as you'd throw your members out if they didn't come up to scratch. So I, I think it's a great opportunity for the accountants, but you know we know this stuff because we've been doing it. We might not be good at it, but at least we've been trying to get yeah. there. And uh, that's where I think uh, you can shine. Well, <clears throat> when you look at um, what are the two main things that affect the financial society, uh, where does valuation come in? One is financial reporting, obviously. Um, more and more is fair value. You know, all yeah. the financial instruments side of things. You've got agriculture, which you know well here. Uh, but then you've got other things like uh, liabilities and decommissioning liabilities for oil and all these sort of things. It's more and more of it is going to be value, and accountants aren't good at value. And that's the sort of area that uh, you can see is going to have to grow. Um, and when you look at the things that are not in the accounts, uh, I, I remember when we brought in the, uh, the standards into Australia and um, Rupert Ma uh, Murdoch had to take all his mastheads off his Australian companies, his uh, newspaper mastheads. He wasn't happy about that. He said, these are assets. And we said, yeah, they are assets, but we don't trust the values. Mm -hmm. And so there's a whole lot of things out there that are still to be valued and actually probably should be on balance sheets but won't because the, the accounting standards said it won't let it go in balance sheets until there's a confidence in it and that isn't there yet. But you look at the values we do allow on, um, people say oh there's lots of intangibles on acquisition but in a way there's a cap, you know there's been a, a a check written, money exchanged and okay you can divide it up into customer lists and brands and whatever you like but ultimately they're not going to allow you to go higher than that check that you wrote. So it's more an allocation than a real value. So I, I think the whole area is to be explored. But there's a huge area for accountants there and there's no doubt about it, there's a hole in accounting at the minute. Um, we just yeah. haven't filled it yet. And that's right. the values role. Well, I, I think, uh, and you, you'd expect me to say this, I think you should link yourselves to the international groups. Now, there's only four or five at the moment. Uh, so if you're going business valuation, I would get together with them. And they're quite keen to do that. You know, we had meetings with the North Americans uh, not so long ago, and they were talking about how do we sort of propel a business valuation around the world? And you say, well, with difficulty, because very few people are doing it. And an organized body, you, Singapore, and that's just about it. Um, so they, they feel that you should get together and push that um, more closely. Secondly, I think you want to uh, differentiate, differentiate yourselves from the cowboys. And it was the big issue with the SEC. I, mean, I remember the uh, assistant uh, chief accountant saying that uh, in America they have uh, four different valuation institutes with five different qualifications and he hasn't a clue who's any good at all. And so he, he, they want the testing done. So I think that's the, the next thing. And thirdly, I think is the case of um, helping to build the profession because at the moment people think, well, it's just a technique. You know, it's a thing accountants do, they learn how to value businesses, that's fine. Um, it's more than that. It's getting more and more important. It's the tough end of accounting, bluntly, um, and it's going to keep growing. So I think that's the other area. Start exploring and moving into that.
Yeah, and you mentioned just now, you know, if you don't get their accounting right, then people will make wrong decisions. Yeah. And I think we can apply <coughs> evaluations. If you don't get evaluation right, then people will also make wrong decisions. But well, when you think that uh, Basel did um, a survey probably four or five years ago, and they gave major banks uh, a portfolio of financial instruments asked them to value them, the differences were up to 140%. And they That's said, well, you know, if that had gone through to their accounts, that could be something like 3% of net assets. Well, some banks only have 3% equity. So does that mean they have no capital reserves at all? So it, it is a huge area. Yes. Uh, and that, that's why it needs to be looked at. All right. Maybe any last words as the chairman of IBSC that you would like to share with us? Well, just to say that um, two things. One, I think valuation has been... Uh, underestimated its importance. I don't think people realise how much of accounting depends on it. The judgments, you know, provisioning or uh, valuation of intangibles, all these are very much uh, on the valuation side. The other aspect is I think that um, nobody knows who the good guys are and we've got to do two things. One is we've got to have a, a solid set of international standards, be set out what a proper value has got to do and identify them. And that's what we're going to do in the next five years. That's great. Thank you very much, Sir David. You're very welcome. Thanks. Nice